welcome to Demon Souls. It's a game that I love. It's a game that many love. I don't want to talk your ear off before we even get started, so we're going to immediately hop into the rather basic character creator here, which has improved by leaps and bounds in later iterations of the Souls series. Usually, I prefer to just mash random until I get a face that looks semi-decent and then proceed. And we will be doing a magic playthrough. Magic in this game is extremely powerful, and many argue that it trivializes a lot of very difficult sections for non-magic wielding characters. And while I don't disagree with the sentiment entirely, I haven't done a magic build in a very long time, and I wanted to re-experience it again. Just to allay any fears, by the way, though it is possible, I won't be doing any equipment wombo combos that let us do hit bosses or anything like that. And now that we have our dude, we can be briefed on the story of this game. Enjoy the cutscene. I'll see you after it. King Alanth the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valarfax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old king Alant had aroused the old one, the great beast below the nexus from its eternal slumber and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls also lose their minds. The mad attack the sane, and chaos reigns. Valarfax spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon's soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors were drawn to the accursed land. But none had returned. Bjor of the Twin Fangs. Yurt the Silent Chief. Sage Urbane. Skurver the Wanderer. The Sixth Saint Astraea and her knight Garl Vinland. And Sage Freik the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. We're immediately thrown into the game. 
as you can see, we have a few healing items, an item that we can use to recover our MP, a key item that sits weightless in our inventory to explain the light that emanates from our character, our weapons, and our armor. Starting as a wizard, we have the offensive flame toss and the defensive water veil. flip of the 
the same coin, I guess it's pretty easy to figure out even without this message. single time I play this game I roll over there and every time I'm sad that there isn't an item to be found. This is our first fog door, something that we'll be seeing quite a lot of at many different points throughout the game. It's actually quite easy to see through, but knowing what we're about to face doesn't help us very much, so we're going to steal ourselves and step inside. The Vanguard is large, his arena is tiny, and that makes for a hell of an encounter. Because of this, I'm completely convinced that the intent was for the boss to make short work of the player, and if it's their first time, it's almost certain to happen. Even though his attacks are rather slow and obviously telegraphed, they have a very wide reach and pack a hell of a punch. The easiest move to dodge by far is his butt stomp, and it's always a relief when you see him do it. If you look towards the center of the arena, you'll notice more developer ghosts that are placed there to show you what it's like to see other players fighting the same boss that you are. I will be the first to admit that watching me lob fireballs at a big sponge isn't the most interesting thing in the world, but luckily Demon Souls bosses are varied enough to the point that it shouldn't be too much of an issue after Vanguard, not to mention the fact that I'll be getting a better melee weapon pretty early on. My smoothest vanguard fight by any means, but I'm glad that I was able to finish him off and show you guys the very tangible reward for felling him. this being from the opening FMV. He's uh, a lot more red now. Basically all that this area provides is an extra amount of healing items and weapon upgrade items which are more than welcome in this game, but the very exclusivity of it is extremely rewarding in my humble opinion. The only way to ever reach this place is to defeat Vanguard in the tutorial. And then you just get decked so hard into the path you came from that you die. Welcome to Demon Souls. from it. 
has trapped your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your physical body. The Nexial Binding is the symbol of those imprisoned in the Nexus. Having this ties you to the Nexus. Even if you lose your physical body, you cannot die, and your soul trapped in the Nexus. The Nexial Binding sends the user back to the Nexus upon death, but all souls collected will be lost. That's an awful lot of Nexuses. This will be our hub world for the rest of the game, and we'll explore it properly in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you back next time.